Here we are in Inkscape Landscape Part 2. Now we're going to finish this thing up by adding our lake shore. So we're going to be using the pencil tool to draw the rocks that will appear down below here. So I'm just going to scroll down and make a little space. And we're going to be making sure that the smoothing is turned on and drawing some simple rock shapes. Okay, We don't want anything too complex because we don't want anything to stand out particularly. We're looking for rocks that will just sort of fade into one another. So once we draw the sh first shape, we're going to set a color. And we are going to draw the next one, keeping them nice and simple. Give it a color and try to keep them versions of the same color. You don't want them to be independently particularly noticeable. We really much rather that they fade into the background a little bit. So grays, blue grays, light, light browns, these sort of colors that are going to give us a variety without really standing out. just kind of making versions of the same color and versions of the same stone here. I just got a little wider. And so once we've made about 10 to 12 of these things, we'll be ready to move on. Nothing too complex. Just darker and lighter versions of the same old rocks. Okay, what do we have here? Four, eight, ten. Okay, we'll make two more here. Eleven. And twelve. Okay, now we have a random selection of rocks. Let's select them all. And we are going to remove this outline. So once we have them all selected, let's click over here on stroke paint and click the X, no more outlines. And back to fill. The, sec the next thing we're gonna do is make them a lot smaller. Okay, now we have our sample for our lakefront rocks. So we have these ones here. What we're going to do is make one duplicate. Bring those over here. And we're gonna move them around a little bit and shape them into some sort of a, a compact, compact grouping and we're going to be layering these into our picture so we don't want them to be too spread out okay now what we're going to do is we'll take this initial group that we made we're going to start dropping them in and we want them to extend outside the line of our picture now we're just creating a base layer. Now I realize this is going to look quite repetitive. But we'll be working on that as we go. So now we have a baseline of some rocks here. So let's make a second duplicate of our rocks. And now we're going to make a new grouping. So we're going to move these ones around to a different position to break that pattern going to group them differently than we did the first one. Okay, now select these ones, move them on top, duplicate, and I'm even going to resize these ones a little bit as I go. Duplicate, maybe I'll flip these ones over. And duplicate, and repeat. I think you're getting the idea by now. Okay, so we're starting to get a nice shoreline here. Let's do this one final time at least. Make one duplicate, and let's move these ones around. And create a new pattern. 
So each time we're looking to avoid the repetitiveness of our pattern. So let's make a duplicate. Bring those ones in here, and we'll copy them again. We'll copy them again. Copy them again. Okay, now we have a base layer here. The last thing I'm going to do to really break this thing up is I'm going to take these individual rocks, and I'm going to place them in there sort of all by themselves. Imagine these as somewhat larger rocks a little farther offshore. I'm just going to randomly place these. And hopefully that's going to completely break up the pattern that might be occurring. Feel free to place a few more if you like. It's very easy to just make a duplicate of a rock and put it out there. But we just want to break that up a little bit and make sure that this gradually fades out. All right, and we're nearing the last final step. So now we want to trim off all of our excess, all these extra pieces that extend out beyond the canvas. So there's a nice little trick to do that all at once. First thing you'll need to do is select the background. So make sure you have the entire background selected, this large rectangle. And we're going to make one duplicate. OK, now we have the entire thing covered. This is what we want to keep. So the next step would be to select all. So we can do Control A to select all, <coughs> or go to our edit menu and choose select all. The important thing is we want to make sure that everything isn't selected. So our last step is to go into the object menu. There you'll find the clip menu, clip. And we're going to do clip set. And what that will do is it will use our top layer as a guide and it will trim off everything that extends outside of that border. And there we go. In one fell swoop, we've trimmed the entire picture. So here we have our lake front. We have our mountains in the distance. We have our reflected moon. And we are finished. So now we can save our work. And the last step that I would do would be to export this image into a into a PNG file. So I'll show you how to do that in case you're interested. So we can do a normal save. So we'll save this one as uh, Lake 2. Now we have an SVG file here, and that's editable, so we could continue to work on this. But if we're complete, what we can also do is export PNG image. And it's going to give us this option over here. So we want to select Drawing, and we want to select our size. So let's say maybe I wanted to go with 1920 or HD resolution. And the height will automatically adjust to match that. Next thing is to select a location. So desktop, for instance, save. And finally, the export button. You'll see this process, uh, speed bar here showing the process to our finished product. And now on our desktop, we'll find a picture of this design. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope your lakefront turned out really well.